Hello and welcome to Silkeborg Chain Club video tutorials. My name is Jens Børsting and today I'm going to show you how to adjust the layout of your course map so you can prepare it for print. We're going to do that by using the graphics and layers functions of Condus. Now you've done a great course setting on your map and you zoom out and when you zoom out you see in the at least in the default setup of Condus you have a blue frame around your map this is the print area frame if you click on it you'll see how Condus divides up your print right now according to your print setter so if you come up here in files and go to print setup you can here see what size that Condus is working with you can of course select any other size depending on what printer you have installed and you can select if it should primarily work with portrait or landscape but Condus will play with that side of it once you adjust the frame so you look at this and maybe you're in the situation like me I only have an A4 printer so I don't want to print this map in two so I have to flip the map uh, back to back or have two maps with me in the forest so I want to adjust this to something that's more like an A4 that I can print on my printer so I adjust the blue frame to something that makes it work for me and now you can see that now I don't have any divisions of the map so something like this would be possible for my printer to do if I expand a little bit too much then I don't get everything included divides into two maps so I can adjust this blue frame back and forth until I have something that works I can also pull the entire frame left or right up and down as I see fit so finally I have something that I like and say okay this could work for me but then I note that there's a lot of stuff that is not included on this map. I don't have the full name of the map. I don't have some of the scalings. I don't have all the logos. I don't have the text down here. So this is what I would like to have included uh, in the map. Sometimes there's even an obligation you have to have it. Maybe you want to add something like some uh, logos from some of your sponsors, or something else. So you'd like to add that. and. Um, now I'm going to show you how to do that. The first thing you want to do is to capture some of all the things you have on the map already. Uh, if you don't already have a graphic files or um, icons you can pull in in graphic mode, you're going to create them first. And it's quite easy to do. You go in to your start menu and you call up your snipping tool. Now it's called a little different in different languages but the symbol is like this and as you'll see I've actually already have it here on my taskbar so this is where I can pull it in so you zoom in on one of the items you would like to create a graphic file off here I would like to take the Sigibo Orientate Club logo so I click on the snipping tool I click on new and then I put a little frame around what I want to copy and once you have that you right click on it and you click on save as you navigate to where you want to store it and I will store it here in the logos folder and then you give it whatever name you want I will call it SOK now you can save it as you see here as a JPEG file you can also save it as a PNG or a GIF file Condos will read all of them. It does not read the HTML format. So make sure you select one of these other ones. Today I'm going to be happy with JPEG file. So I'm going to save that. Okay, and then I'm going to click on new. I'm going to come down here and look at the map magic logo. And I'm going to again right click. I'm going to save as. Call that map magic. So you basically move around on your map and select all the things you would like. Now there's an element up here I'm going to show you how to play with. 
uh, once we get into condos because here you have a bigger area that you would like to maybe bring in on your map so again you bring up your oh, let's zoom in so make sure we get the right resolution of it click back on your snipping tool you take new you say i want all of this in here now when it comes up here you realize there's actually some portion of the map that comes with it and that is maybe not what you want so maybe it's a better idea to cut it into sections and take each of these elements and create graphic files of it. But let's bring this in because I can show you how to actually manipulate this when you get into um, Condis and in the graphics sections of it. So let us just save this as map name plus, and then see how that works. So move around and copy all the different graphic objects or objects you want to put in on your final map. I'm going to do that uh, while I turn the video off and then I'm going to come back and show you how to enter it back into the map. You're now ready to enter the graphics mode or graphics side of Condis. You do that by coming up here in the top menu and you select graphics. Either that or you come over here and click on one of these uh, menu items here and that'll switch Condis into graphic mode. The first thing we're going to do is block away or hide or mask the part of the map that you don't need. You do that by coming over here and clicking this uh, square or rectangle here saying new mask area and then you click around on your map as you see you don't need. So you are going to make sure you have everything included uh, if you're working with uh, the same for all courses, which is the first way I'm going to show you here, you want to make sure you select the course that covers the greatest part of the map. And then you simply click around that area. You make sure you're not eliminating something that you would need or the runner would need on the map for navigating between the different control points. And it could look something like this. And now you come out here and you move around the outside of the map to make sure that everything is eliminated. And once you're done, you double click and you see it has now covered or masked everything you don't need on the map. Now, a little note here is as long as you're still working on this area, you can still adjust the corners and you will see kind of changes uh, what is actually covered or masked, but you're not seeing really the final result until you deselect by clicking out in the open, and then you'll see the blue frame came, comes back. So now this is this is basically the raw element that you have left working with, and in this area, you can you can again click on your blue frame. Sorry, I have to come out of graphics mode, so you come back to regular course setting mode, you click on the blue frame and you realize, okay, so this is my print area. I would like to adjust that a little bit in here. And I'm probably going to adjust on this side. I don't need it to be quite as tall. And you keep adjusting until you have something that works for you, that gives you what your printer can do, or whatever the case might be. So you are you're now coming back to this is my final print. This is the blue frame that will be around on, the, on my map when I'm printing the final map. You can, of course, adjust this. You can move it down here if you want to, if this is what you prefer. So you have a lot of flexibility in moving this frame around to where you want it. So I'll choose this. So now you're ready to add back in some of all the text and logo you would want to have on your map. So you come over here and we need to come back to graphics mode. I'm sorry to come over here and you click this icon, new graphics. And then you come in on the map and you click, I would like to put new graphics here. 
a menu pops up and you have options to select this for all courses or only this course. I'm going to select all courses because I today I would like to print um, the same size of map for all my courses, but you could select for this course only and then you can make different layouts for all the courses. You will also note here that this is only for this canvas. If you have separate canvases, then you have to come in and do this for each canvas. Canvas is not part of this lecture. I'll show you something about canvases in a different lecture later. So now you're ready to select the file. You come in here, you navigate to where you saved all your logos. And let's say we want to start with the uh, Duff logo. We open that. And now you have a couple options here. Um, you can use the map, you can have a white background. If it's a transparent logo you have, you can lock the position and a few other things. So there's some things you can play with here. I will let you play with those elements uh, yourself in your own time. So for now, we're just going to select all courses and this file. And it comes in and you can see, oh, that's a bit of a big logo, but that's easy. You can just change the size of it. You move it to where you would like to locate it. And again, you deselect it and it's in its final form and in a good position. And this way you can bring in more graphic elements to where you want it. And again, select all courses. You select the file. And on this one, I would like to choose the text. And a great big text come in here. Oh, that's very big. So again, I'm going to adjust it to something that fits on the map. So this is now a graphic element, which means I cannot change the text here. I can only put this in as basically as a picture. Again, if you want to adjust it, I recommend that you use the right side of these. Uh, dots, you can see if you come up here and pull on the top right side, it's it's maybe not that easy to understand how it how it changes size. Um, so Condes has a little funny way of doing that. But if you use the right lower corner, it's a little bit easier and in uh, intuitive how you actually adjust the size of it. So I'm going to put it down here, and we're good to go. So you move around and you pull all your different elements in this way. And once you've done that, uh, we can discuss again. I'll do this while I pause the video and then we can talk about finalization. OK, so we brought everything in on the map. We have organized it where we like it. You can just click and move. If you want to adjust it slightly, you can move it up and down in size. And everything looks really good. So just a couple of notes here. The first thing is, you'll see that I've added a few things here and there. First of all, I added this scale bar. This is not a good idea because as you can see, I can change the size of this. And I have actually no clue if this is the right scaling or not. So I would strongly recommend when you work with graphics mode that you're not including this scale bar unless you have developed your own technique in making sure that it has precisely the length that it's supposed to have to represent what it's actually saying. So I'll delete that on this. Um, the same goes if you, for instance, have coordinates on the map like I have here. Um, in this area here. Now, this is from the original map, but if, if I had copied that out as a graphic element and try to re-enter that on the map, that is not a good idea either. It's very difficult to relocate uh, this as a graphic element in the correct position. So I strongly recommend to not include that or make sure it is uh, from the original map so you don't make a mistake there. You'll see that the clue sheet is back on here as supposed to, and it's it's uh, on, in front of the, the masked area or the covered white area. That is actually also a graphic element, but you cannot click on it here and make any sense of it because that is 
minutes once you are in the course setting mode and then you can move it around where you would like to locate it. So you cannot move the clue sheet in the graphics mode. You have to be in course setting mode. Now I promised you to show you another little fun thing you can play with. And if you, for instance, had made this big cutout to put in here, instead of cutting it into small portions, then you get this little yellow triangle you don't want here. So you can actually exclude that by coming back to the mask tool. And then you place a little triangle around this. And it disappears. Now it disappears because it is putting an additional layer on top of your um, your map name uh, graphic uh, insert. Now it does that in Condus just like you have sheets of paper on your table. So if you take one sheet of paper and lift it on top of the others, then you can't see what's behind it. So there's actually a function in here where you can play with that because if you right click on this triangle, let me just highlight it first. So you highlight this triangle and you right click it and it comes up with an option to arrange. And on this arrange menu item, you can bring it to top, move it down, uh, or move it up and down, and even go all the way to the bottom. So depend on what level you want this uh, icon or this graphic element to be in your stack of papers on your disk or here on the map, you can move it up or down. So if you try to move it down once, you'll see now it's behind my map name. So it's not hiding the yellow triangle. So you got to come back and click on it again. You right click on it, you arrange and you move it back up and now it's on top and it masks that little yellow triangle. So this is how you move layers in Condus. You can do that with any of the other graphic elements you have you'll see which one is actually on top. It goes on in order. So whatever you placed first is below the ones that comes after. But if you'd like to bring this uh, logo forward, you can bring it to top and you'll now see it's in front of the Silga Boynton Club logo. So this is how you play with the layers in Condus. Now I don't want this because it doesn't make sense here and I don't want this triangle here so I can move that to the side and now I'm good. Now there's two other elements you can play with in graphics mode. One of them is lines. So you can click on the line tool and now you can actually draw lines as you see fit in here. Now this can be done for any number of things you want to highlight on the map or you want to do around your event center or you, you just want to highlight certain things. So you double click when you're done and once you have this on your map you can right click on it and you can edit graphics and then a menu pops up where again you can select is it on all courses or only this course. You can select the line width if you want something that's much wider you can do that. Um, you can select the dashed line and as default it's set up as the color of your course. You can come in here and say no I want to do something different I want to have this as a gray blue line and you click OK. You come back and click OK and you see it pops up. Now there's a little caveat there right now it shows up in blue but that's only because you're in edit mode. It's not because I selected blue when you click out here and deselect it, it comes back in its final color. So before you're done with it, you un unselect it to see if it is really the color you would like. So you can select any color, you can have dashed modes, you can set the width of the line, and you can play with that in here. I'm going to delete that again because I don't need a line on this map. The other thing you can do is come back and use the text graphics, and in this way you can insert it text here. So you come in, it says again all courses only this course. You can uh, select a uh, range of different standard texts out here. You can also enter your own text here. Uh, 
like video tutorial. And then out here you can select some of the formatting if you want a left format, what font you want to use, what what uh, color you want to use. And then a nice little thing here you can select white background if you're going to enter this text like on the map. Uh, so you don't want it to be transparent. You want to make sure you can read what it says. You can select this. You can also have a frame around it. So there's a there's a range of things you can do with the text here. And now it comes up. You can move it around wherever you want to put it and use it this way. One of the things that is very useful for is, for instance, my map here is in Danish. So I could put in this word here, which is equidistance. In Danish, I could actually put that in in English, and then I could put this text on top of it, and then it would cover the Danish text. So that's one one option you can use this text for. And another thing is, if you are actually printing on a different scale than the original map is at, you can come in here and cover the map scaling with your new scale. Of course, you have to then enter the scale the correct scale and put that on there. So there's a couple of different things you can use text for. So you're now done with your layout and you're happy with the way it looks and you're ready to print. Now there's one extra thing I want to show before you do that. There's a nice little item over here I think you should use and that is the Kundas logo. And this is of course nice to Kundas that you make sure you add this on your map so everybody can see that you've been using this nice software for your course sitting. And before you go to print, you just want to make sure you've done everything right. Um, uh, and it comes up the same way on all the different courses. And you do that by <clears throat> making sure you can view the entire blue frame. And then you click course two and you see what happens. Oops, this is not good. I don't <clears throat> I don't get the result I want. So I come back here and one of the first thing I'm going to check is my, again, I have to come into graphics mode. I check my mask area. I go right click and edit graphics and say, oh, okay. I only did that on this course. I want that for all the courses. You click okay and you come back. You click on course two and you see, oh, okay. What disappeared there? It is the SOK logo, and of course, my clue sheet is also different. So again, I, sorry, I have to come up to graphic mode. I click here, edit graphics, and I go in and set all courses, click OK. And now I should have the same on this. And except for my clue sheet, which I want to move down here, and probably the same for course one, then everything looks pretty good now. Now I could come in here, and this is something you might want to consider when you have a course like this that only covers a very small portion of your map. And one of the big things with your printing is it takes a lot of toner to print clear color like yellow or uh, green or something else. So you could say, well, I, I really don't want to waste all that toner on my printer because it's a it's a very expensive way of doing it. Then you could come in and say, okay, I'm going to add another mask layer here that'll cover this area here. And then, of course, on this one, you edit graphics and you make sure it's only on this course that this mask is there or this cover is there. And then you can see for course two, you have the full map and course three, you have the full map. For course one, you only have the part of the map that you wanna print and you save some of your toner. Okay, I think that is basically what I wanted to show you in this video tutorial. Um, I'm going to come back later with a video talking about the difference into different canvases and different map scaling and how you want to put that up. And that, of course, also reflects how you want to make your final prints of your map. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, video. If you uh, like, please like below and uh, subscribe to our channel. 
and please check back later. We will produce more video and publish here on this channel. Thank you very much for checking in.